In this video, I want to introduce you to the complex conjugate root theorem. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be going through a proof of this theorem, uh, just to be clear if that's, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm just going to be explaining its consequences for us for the A-level maths, A-level further maths course. Okay. So the idea is that you've got a polynomial okay, in one variable, so we'll just work with z. Okay. And the polynomial has real coefficients. Okay. So something like um, 3z squared plus z plus 5 equals 0, for example. A, uh, a quadratic would be enough. So a polynomial, one variable with real coefficients. Okay. If you know that that polynomial has one complex numbered root. So if z... Um, is a complex root, okay, if you know one of those roots, okay, of your polynomial, then z star, the complex conjugate, is also a root of your polynomial. Okay, now this is particularly useful, and this works, okay, for any uh, ordered polynomial, okay? So it could be a quadratic, cubic, quartic, whatever. Now, that's very important. So what that means is that the complex numbers appear in pairs, okay? So that means that if you told me that um, a polynomial had the root, so let's say it's a quadratic, and the first root, let's call it alpha, is 2 plus 4i. If I know that the quadratic has real coefficients and one of the roots is 2 plus 4i, then I also know that the other root, let's call it beta, is the complex conjugate. Okay? And I could state that straight off the fact because it's a complex conjugate pair. Now, Likewise, I mean, it could be that it's a cubic. So let's say gamma uh, is equal to 3. So it has three roots, OK? But the third root's going to have to be real, OK? Because I can't have a third root that is a complex number, because otherwise you're, uh, you don't have the pair to go with that other one. So I can't have, like, 3 plus 2i because the complex conjugate, well, sorry, the complex number roots have to appear in pairs because of the complex conjugate root theorem. So if we had 3 here, then I would need to have, let's say delta, I would need to have another root that is the complex conjugate pair. So now I would have a cortic, okay? Now, another practical reason as to why your cubic would have to have um, at least one real root is that because when you draw a cubic, right, if it's a positive cubic, so um, x cubed rather than a minus x cubed, it's got to start in the bottom left and work its way to the top right. So at some point, it's got to cross the x-axis. So it will have to have a real root. There's no way that you can have your cubic and it not cross that x-axis. While if you do go for that cortic, so 3 plus 2i and delta is 3 minus 2i, it's perfectly fine for a cortic okay, to look something like that and never cross the x-axis. But then if you had another root in, it's going to have to be real for a quintic, because for a quintic, it's got to cross the x-axis, at least in one place. So one could look like that, for example. So this is a very useful and important theorem, OK, that you can utilize, because if you know one of the roots is complex, you automatically know its complex conjugate has to be a root as well.